<laughs> well, he's a great fieldsman, Philip Tuffner. He often falls over and he's brought it into his batting as well. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Borny and Tuffers Cricket Club podcast brought to you by The Telegraph. Michael Vaughan, Phil Tufnell and me, Ben Wright, with you for our final show of the year. We'll be looking back on a simply sensational 12 months for English cricket, including yet another Test match win in Pakistan, meaning England will head home with a 3-0 series whitewash to cap off their first year under the guidance of Ben Stokes and Brendan McCullum. And it's not just the Red Bull side who have had success. England's one-day side followed up their 2019 ODI World Cup win by winning the T20 World Cup back in November. I'm delighted to say that we'll be speaking to the man who was named player of the tournament, Sam Curran. We'll get his take on the year gone by and if he has designs on breaking into Brendan McCullum's test side. And we'll also have a quick look ahead at what to expect next year when the Aussies are back in town to defend the Ashes. Mike, Phil, how are you? It's our last pod of the year. It's 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 flown past, isn't it? Funny, the things just fly <laughs> past when you're enjoying yourself. It's been great. What a year. Yeah, that's true. Great start, good year, good guests. That's the most important aspect, getting a yes. few nice guests on. Uh, time for Christmas, time for a few mince pies and a bit of turkey. I like the must admit, I like the 23rd of December, I don't know why. The 23rd always seems to be the day to have a good party. And then you recover yeah. for the remaining few days left. <laughs> Isn't that the day of the IPL auction as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we got Sam Curran coming on. He, I think he's quite rich now, but I reckon he's going to be very rich by the 24th. <laughs> <laughs> he might be having a good Christmas. How about you, Phil? What are you doing to get into Christmas spirit? Well, we have just we just went to uh, Wimbledon to see uh, Snow White. A big load of us go every year. Oh, so we all cruise down there. Um, it's a little bit awkward considering there's about sort of 15 sort of adults all sitting there going it's behind you <laughs> and everything i think the children all look <laughs> at us the, the children all look at us a little bit strangely but that's our little sort of ritual every year and it kicks <laughs> off kicks off christmas for us so uh, yeah nearly there looking forward to it um too much too much food too much wine uh be lovely yeah have you ever been in Panto? I reckon you make a good buttons. Well, you know, never say never. They have offered me a few, and I've always just sort of resisted. Really? It a bit. Yes, um, I've resisted it, but who knows? Why? Well, I, well, it's, it's quite hard work. You know, you've got to do a couple of shows a day. <laughs> <laughs> you only you only have Christmas Day off. It's six weeks of hard graft. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, but who knows? I think I'd make quite a good buttons or something. You know, Phil, Phil, you, what, what you're trying to say is let, let's be. <laughs> Absolutely honest. The check has not quite been big enough yet. <laughs> well, listen, it's all right. Listen, Panto's not about. I think, I think I, I might do a bit of Panto and then go to the Caribbean for a month afterwards for a rest. Oof, now you're talking. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Yeah. It does feel weird to be talking about cricket at this time of the year, but mm. uh, um, we've got plenty of great cricket to talk about. Mm. And, and, and look back on as well, because it's been a hell of a period. Wow. Mike, you were tweeting that you think is probably the best period for English cricket. Oh, men's cricket, yeah. Wow. In the last seven months has been, you know, and, and, I, and I said on my tweet, and I might have to buy quite a few pints because I said, if anyone wants to have a pint to have the argument, come on, let's meet in a pub, ex-players, everyone. Because in the last seven months, when you think about where English, the test team in particular were at the end of the Caribbean, they'd lost to the West Indies. The West Indies are just an okay side. They're okay at home. Uh, England has played a, a brand of cricket that was very attritional uh, and they got done in that last test match. Um, since Ben and Baz have taken over and Rob Key, um, the seven months that uh, has kind of come in terms of the test matches, um, nine out of ten victories, um, World Cup, T20 champions. You can tell me, Phil, can you remember a better seven months for English cricket? Nine out, of, and not just nine out of ten wins. It's it's the manner, it's the way they've played, it's the flamboyancy, the excitement. You know, getting up at five o'clock in the morning in the UK to watch Test match cricket in Pakistan. Historically, it's been one as you turn it on at five o'clock and you kind of you kind of looking through half an eye, aren't you? Because you know it's <laughs> dot ball, dot ball, dot ball. With this England side, you get up at five o'clock and you go right. I'm watching. You know, so they've got everyone around the world, not just in England, excited about this style of Test match cricket. So, yes, I think it has been the last seven months the greatest seven months 
of English men's test cricket and obviously with the World Cup win, cricket in general. Phil, do you agree? I, I've got to. I've got to. I mean, it was was very very lucky to, to to witness it during the summer, which was just extraordinary. I mean, you know, New Zealand, South Africa, India. You know, so there was all different styles of uh, people we played against, different teams, different strengths, different weaknesses, and every every sort of. Um, obstacle that is getting put in the way of this England side they're seeming to just cruise over it with a with a, a as you say a style and a flamboyancy that is is just second to none so I make Mike put dead right and then to go to Pakistan another obstacle these flat sort of you know, turgid pitches where you've got to, it's attritional, you've got to get the 20 wickets, you've got to score quickly. And they've managed to do that. You know, a, a, a whitewash in uh, in Pakistan is something, you know, on those kind of pitches, it really, really is something. Uh, it, it was England's best bowler in the summer, arguably. Oh, crikey. Well, this is how, how good England have become. You, you, there's no there's no Joffre Archer there. There's no Stuart Broad there. Johnny no, Bairstow, doing no. the best player in the summer, is not there. No. And actually, you could argue that England's best seamer in the summer was Matthew Potts. Yes, Matthew Potts yes, is I nowhere near Matthew this Potts. squad. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's what I'm saying. This is this is how, in the short space of time, this England Test match yeah. team have built. You look at Will Jacks makes his debut, gets six for. Two games later, yeah. he's not playing. They make a debut for an 18 year old, Rohin. He gets five for. He then bats at number three in the second innings. This test team and group of players have done things that no other England team has ever done. And what they've done, I always look at sport and sporting teams, how strong is your bench? That's how good a team you are. You look at that Aussie team of the 90s, 2000s, it it was their second team that would have beaten most other teams around the world. And I think England, in terms of general, general cricket across 50 overs, T20s, now test match cricket, They've got a group of players that's it's growing. It's growing. They're almost like every single position you're looking at. There's, there's probably Ben Stokes, Joe Root, Jimmy Anderson. I, I would say the three that can't be replaced. You know, those are the three players that England for. You, you do well to replace those three. I think every single other player in the team, you could replace it with another player and the standard will be very, very similar. Yeah, no, just just the other thing, just quickly there, no, no Broad and Anderson in that last Test match as well. You know, we haven't mm. won too many games yeah. without a Broad and Anderson, and that just reiterates your point about the bench. You know, Ollie Pope comes in and takes the gloves and pulls off some great catches. Yeah. I mean, and 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 that that five, I've just got to just touch on it quickly by Rahan Ahmed. Um, that wasn't just a, a sort of one of those fivers that you kind of pick up. Listen, they're difficult to pick up anyway. That was a game changing fiver. You mm-hmm. know, that was a fiver yeah. that, you know, Baba was starting to get going. They, Pakistan was starting to sort of like reassert themselves in the position in the match. And he's come on and, you know, five for 40 odd. I mean, it's just, just incredible. I mean, that was a match changing match win. And what, what did you make of his bowling, Phil? I thought it was excellent. I thought it was excellent. He, he, he gets a lot of. He's, he's an energetic kind of chap, anyway. He's bustly. He, 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 you know, he, he's eighteen. You know what I mean? He's sort of you know walking back to his mark and he's flipping the ball up and everything like that. He gets good revs on it. Listen, he bowled a few bad balls. You're always going to bowl a few bad balls, but on those pitches, and let's be fair, they didn't turn that much. They weren't absolute yeah. raggers, you know, like sometimes you come across in India and things like that. They were still pretty flat wickets. He gets a lot of energy on the ball. He's got a great Google, which I think is his – he could almost bowl googlies, actually, with the sort of the leggy because yeah. he doesn't turn his leggy mat much, but he just turns it enough to keep you honest and you don't quite know where you are. But that leg spinner, he lands beautifully time after time. Um, he, he's in your face. He bowls with good pace, and he gets it there or thereabouts with a little bit of mystery on it. I think he's. I think he really is one for the future. He really is. The one thing I would say to him, just having a little look at him, is that sometimes, I mean, we talk about the late, great Shane Warne. Sometimes he created a bit of theatre. Listen, this is his first test match. He's done absolutely brilliantly. I think sometimes... He might just, you know, on slightly sort of pitches that aren't giving him any help or against, you know, Aussies and things like that, he might just need to sort of like calm the over down a little bit, you know what I mean? And just sort of like, you know, create that 
that that theatre and build an over. But I mean, he's so young. I mean, was he? He's only played four, three first class games, hasn't he? Is that right or something? Yeah. He hasn't this played. This was his fourth. Any, is this his? I mean, come on! What is going on here? The, the one thing that you and it's very hard to teach. So all the coaches that have worked with Rehan over the years at Leicester, at Knox, uh, his family deserve a huge amount of credit. But how he gets that inner confidence. Yeah. You know, how you teach an 18-year-old on his Test match debut to look confident, I, I, I have no idea how you do it. I think that's just yeah. um, genetically in him. He, he's clearly a very confident, I think he's completely obsessed with the game, which is great. Yeah. Um, my advice to him is just just enjoy it. Enjoy playing. Yeah. You're 18, you'll, you'll have a few stumbles, don't worry about that. Will he play the next Test match in New Zealand? Probably not. Will he go to New Zealand? Absolutely. Will he play many test matches next summer in the Ashes? Possibly not. You know, you, you look at England's kind of team as the way they'll make up. He, he may not get in. He might have to wait for that all-rounders position, you know, at six or seven in, in, in the batting line because he's, he is that good a batter. I do think he's going to be a top-order batter for England in test match cricket. But to start and start so well, and that is with him now. He's got a fifer. He's been a part of a team that's won a series. He's won a test match. He's batted at number three for England in a test match. It's every box ticks. And you look at all the selections, and and I'll go back to, you know, again, the last seven months, and I'm saying it's the best ever. Um, England haven't had a chairman of selectors. You know, before (laughs) that, everyone's going, oh, they need a chairman of selectors. That's why England are playing so badly in Australia in the Caribbean. It's all utter nonsense. When you've got good people, good leaders, Ben Stokes, Baz McCullum, Rob Key, it all operates itself. And then you use all the tools behind this in Mobobat at the ECB does a tremendous job scouting players. And he's always been doing the same job, but it's about the leadership at the top end that needs to be right. And when you get that right, everything else just falls into place. But I don't think you could ever have had a tour where you look at every single player that played, apart from Liam Livingston, obviously who picked up that injury, every single player that played contributed to the victory. So it was a real collective team effort. Uh, It's very rare that you do that. I mean, I remember when we won in Sri Lanka and Graham Thorpe pretty much won as the series, as he did in Pakistan. He was a standout batter. One or two others contributed, but he really was the standout. On on this tour, every single batter has contributed. Every single bowler has contributed. And I think that's the lesson to, to go and win and win in the way that England have done in those conditions. You need a collective from all the team. And that's exactly what Ben got from his squad. Uh, absolutely. And also, just talking about Ben and Baz, every decision they've made, I mean, they should definitely yeah. be doing the lottery. You know what I mean? Because every little, yeah. every time they've thrown the ball to a, an 18 year old, or they've brought in an Ollie Pope to keep wicket, or they've done this, or they've done that, they have absolutely nailed it. I mean, how are you going to get into this England side? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it, we were talking earlier about, you know, the strength in depth. It's about getting all these guys in. Yeah. I was looking at some of the stats for this series because oh. it's obviously a, a 3 0 series, whitewash. No other touring side has done that in Pakistan. Yeah. But I mean, some of the, I mean, there are so many extraordinary stats but you just got to pick out a few. So England scored at 5.5 and over across the three matches. <laughs> Brilliant. And all the innings is, in every match, 5.5. And the and the strike rates of the players are just extraordinary. So Zach Crawley, 92. Duckett, 96. Pope, 94. Old man Root could only manage 85. But Brooke <laughs> got 93. Stokes, 93. And if you think about it, when England won, last won in Pakistan, Mike Atherton scored 125 in Karachi. <laughs> that took nine hours and four... <laughs> 430 bubbles. <laughs> well, that's it's, it's, just, it's just a different sport. Yeah, <laughs> but isn't it great though? You, you know, you know what? But give me, give me a nine hour hundred over a. Oh. <laughs> Come I mean, on, there, there's, there's a certain sort of special beauty. In uh, that, yeah. that, that is a skill in itself, and a, a very difficult skill uh, uh, to try and produce that amount of concentration. For some, by the way, against Wakar and Wazib, it's not easy. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I yeah. will say, look, to go to, to to go to Pakistan and win three 0 I mean, it is historical. It's never been done before. Uh, the Pakistan side weren't great. Let's be honest, they weren't a great side. They had Baba and they had Abra. Ahmedu um, was a, obviously a mystery spinner who looks like he's going to have a longer career in Test match cricket. Um, but I, I know of many, many teams that have been to the subcontinent and have not won three 0 against lesser Pakistan teams. Yeah. You know, and they might have won one nil by praying attritionally and hanging in there and beating the the side and in the last Test match or the second and hanging in for a draw on the third. To go to Pakistan and score at 5.5, doesn't matter what the standard of the opposition is, and blow them away. 
Absolutely. But, and also to set out on day three to chase over 160 and try and do it in a session. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you're changing the batting line. You know, Rohan goes to three. I'll bat at number four, the skipper. I'll see it off. I want to try and hit five, six and, and get the game done and dusted. I just think the playing away and in, and in, and in a style uh, that we all thought there was going to be bumps in the road. Well, they've had one little bump against South Africa at Lords. I think they'll surprise Australia hugely. And, and, and knowing Australia... I'm sure they'll be doing some research. I'm sure they'll be studying, but they're quite an arrogant bunch, the Aussies. And they'll believe that Stark, Cummins, Hazelwood, Lyon, uh, Scotty Boland, they'll just do for this batting lineup playing this way. They'll just think, oh, we'll just arrive and land it on a line. They're going to get a massive shock. Because if you look at the names of the bowlers that England have absolutely battered this year, Bumrah, Jameson, Bolt, Southie, uh, Nokia, Rabada, Janssen, you're yeah. talking high-class quick bowling, so it's easy for Australia. Oh, you know, you can't do it against Cummins ago. Well, they've done it against equally half decent fast bowling. So if the Aussies aren't prepared properly, they're going to get a big, big shot next summer. If you think inside seven months, there's no way in a million years any of us would have given England any chance in next year's Ashes after the the West Indies tour. Well, I reckon seven months later, I have England as long as Ben Stokes is fit. I have England as favourites to win the Ashes next year. Ooh. Ooh. Well, there you go. I do. I, I have them as favourites, Mike. But just a mention for Ben Duckett. I think he's coming. Do you see that as a horses for courses pick, or do you see him opening the bat in uh, this summer as well? I mean, he came in and played beautifully. Hasn't he got. He, he got. Been... He got the second second most runs in the series after um, yeah. Brooks. No, I yeah. think. I, I think. I, I think Ben Duckett is one of those players. I mean, but when the ball's swinging and seaming around. This batting lineup will look fragile. You know, we saw that at Lords against South Africa. We saw it at Headley against New Zealand when it was swinging. But they kind of go, you know, it can't swing for eighty overs, and and the, and the Duke ball didn't do it as much last uh, last summer. So if it does plenty, you know, I think whoever opens the batting for England, it's going to be difficult. It's not an easy job. But I do think in Ben Duckett, he's always had that gift to be able to play. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. got the touch. He plays spin brilliantly. He's busy. He you know, he's had a great time of it at Knotts. It's been a good move of it for him to go to Knotts. Um, yeah, I mean, will he have a huge amount of success against the swinging seeming ball? Uh, I'm not too sure, but how many players of this era do have success against the swinging seeming ball? Not too many. So I just, I, I like looking at combinations at the top of the order who look right together. Yeah. And I thought the tall Crawley... And, and I'll call him the little lad, the little lad, Ben Duckett. It, it kind of works. Left and right hand is one thing. But when you've got a really tall right-handed batter who can kind of drive pretty much any length, and then you've got this this little left hand who's, who plays right on the back foot and square the wicket, I think it's very, very difficult to change your length so quickly, you know, when you're rotating the strike with that kind of combination. So... I hope they get a run in the team. I hope both of them get a run in the team and, 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 and get that, that kind of time to try and work out that partnership in the long term. Uh, and we mentioned Harry Brook. He got another century. First England batter to score 300s in his first four tests. I think he's the only six, only the sixth to do it in all time. Ben Stokes said he could be England's Virat Kohli. Is that over the top or is that realistic? <laughs> well, the way he's going, the way he's going at the moment just seems to have... Um, I mean, Mike, you'll probably know more than me about this, but, you know, I mean, it's all about shot selection, isn't it? And sort of like weighing up and also shot execution. He seems to execute the shot right at the right time as well. Very, And he just looks totally at ease with it. I think, you know, playing in the PSL has helped him massively over in, in Pakistan about where to sort of hit. It, he hits those pockets in deep mid-wicket and through extra cover very nicely. Um but he just seems to play the right shot at the right time. I mean, he's just, he, 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 this England side, as you say, everyone who's come in and done their little bit just seem. you just, I felt that Ryan Ahmed was going to get a five for as soon as he came on the bowl. I feel that Harry Brooks going to go out there and get a hundred. I just sort of think that's the norm. I mean, it's just incredible, you know, and I think that, you know, when, when that confidence feeds through a dressing room, you're going out there, not to survive. You're not going out there just to get a couple of wickets or get yourself a 30. You're going out there to change the game. And these what this is what these guys are doing at the moment. Yeah, Harry Brooks plays so well. And, you know, is he, is he worth mentioning in the same breath as Vera at the minute? Um, I can completely understand why Ben says that because he's, a, he's an all-format player. I think that's why yeah. he's saying it. He's an all-format player. There's only a small few can play 
all the formats so well, and, and he certainly got the game to do so. I mean, you, you start looking at, 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 the, at when Bairstow's fit, and you're going, wait a yeah. minute, Ducky and Ducky and Crawley, Pope at three, Joe at four. I know. You know, Bairstow at five. Where does Brook play? Stokes will be at six. Will Bairstow have to keep wicket? Yeah. And then you can get Harry Brook in at seven. Um, or will Bairstow about seven? Look, you've got so many kind of questions with not too many answers at the minute, which is great for the selectors. That's what you want. You want to have all these players yeah. uh, good enough to play in your team. But I, I do think in Harry Brook, um, you know, this is, you're looking at a player inside his first few test matches that, again, I know I like coming out with big statements. Has there been a, a player inside four test matches played better for England? The first That's four test matches of your career to get 300 in Pakistan. Uh, I mean, Joe Root came out of the blocks okay and he, he always looked an incredible player. But even Harry Brooks kind of surpassed that. I mean, he's done something. That I, I, I thought he was good. I always thought he was a player, but I, I never realised how good a player he was. And, and, and clearly England have found, and it's this younger group of players that are coming yeah. coming through. Crawley's answered a lot of his critics that were right to stick with him. You've got Duckett, he's a young player. Pope's a young player. Harry Brook is a young player. Yeah. Rehina Aramid is a young player. I mean, you've got so many young cricketers that are coming through that uh, you kind of look at the stock of English cricket and it should be able to serve them for quite a, quite a few years now. Just a quick one as well. Little little, little, little word for the nut. Jackie Leach. Jackie. Oh, I they're think not he more did nice. Right. More nice than nut. Well, nice. Got his wickets. You know, I think he's had a little bit of a, you know, people are a bit on a downer for old Jack, but you look at his figures and he's done well. He's got his wickets when when, when they were needed. Got some nice big wickets when needed as well. So little, little, uh, little um, word for Jack Leach. I like well. him. Do you know what? He, 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 he looks to me like he's, he's spinning it down there with a bit of pace on it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah, I always felt it was going down bit. there with, with it, yeah, it, it was always getting down the batter's end at a decent pace, but without any kind of uh, any Action kind of revolutions energy. on the ball. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, got a bit more I just feel and that's confident. That's yeah. confidence. That Pfeiffer against New Zealand heading last year um, yeah. was was this kind of moment, wasn't it? And and yeah. he's got a captain who just just knows how to deal with him, how to set fields for him. Ben sets the fields for all the ball. As simple as that. Whoever comes on to bowl. Ben Baser said, you bowl, I'll set your fields. And if you don't like them, well, I'll take you off. As we said, it's been a hell of a year for English cricket. So what was your standout performance during the last seven or eight months? And what was your favourite moment? Phil, you first. I've got one. Well, there's been so many. I can't. It's, It's very, very difficult. But I think... I th- wow, crikey. I mean, there's so many. Joe Root at Edgbaston was just amazing. But I, I, I think uh, the last, is it the last day at Trent Bridge, I think, when Johnny Bairstow mm. just, and Ben just went ballistic. I mean, the roar that was going after around tea. after tea was just amazing. I was on my feet in the commentary box, looking out of the window, you know, going, oh, my God, what do you know what I mean? And I, was, I couldn't sort of contain my excitement of it. It was a glorious day. People had flocked. And it was the it was the sort of I know, I know they've done well at Lords and what have you, but it was the first real kind of like you know can can this be achieved? Can we do this? You know how are they going to do it? Is you know if they lose a couple of wickets and it just the floodgates opened, the place was absolutely rocking. Trent Bridge on a sunny um, afternoon is one of the best places to watch cricket, and it was just special. So for, for, I mean, it was all summer for me, but that that specific little time. Um, yeah, I think Trent Bridge for me and Johnny Bairstow. Yeah, I, I, I think every single Test match has had a highlight or two or three that you could kind yes, of it has. pinpoint. It has. I, I'm, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to pinpoint one shot, and it's a shot that has never, ever, ever been played in Test match cricket before, and it was at Trent Bridge. And to see Joe Root reverse sweep Tim Southey from a yard and a half outside of Ostrom, a good ball, length ball, for six over third man was something that, I, I, for one, we don't see that in one-day cricket that often. We used to see Saywag early in one day and he smashed one over wide third for six. Now you've got an England traditional test player yes, pretty much batting left-handed and just flicking one over third for six. That, for me, was... 
a moment and, and, and one that I reckon still gets replayed by all the kids and, and all the kids are trying to copy it. And the more I look at that shot, the more I think, very sensible, actually, because he knew, <laughs> well, it's sensible because he knew, he knew where it was going to be. It was going to... It was going to be outside off stump because the field was set for being outside off stump because they're going to try and pat the offside with seven two. They did, and he decided. Well, that's obviously available for the left-handed little flick over that vacant area. So yeah, I, I'm going to pinpoint that one shot from Joe Root. Yeah. I, I, also, I've got, I've got, I've got to say, as you said, there were so many. It's difficult to nail it down, isn't it? But as you say, it was at Edgbaston, and, and again another glorious day. And, and we thought, right, this Indian bowling light up's a little bit special. You know, the likes of Boomer, Sammy and all these kind of guys. Can they do it against this Indian side? And what was it, 380? 380 or something like that they knocked off? I mean, yeah. I, don't, I can't remember. Um, but um, Three, 374, I think it was. 374, I mean, unheard of. And, it was the, and, and, and I spoke to Joe afterwards on sort of interview, and I just said to him, they couldn't stop you scoring a, a run of ball. You know what I mean? It was just that, that there was no way. And it was just, it was like... So clinical. So I'm going to put that in there as well. That note not from Joe Roo uh, against India as well. So, I mean, just just been yeah, fabulous yeah. to watch. What a treat for English cricket and, and supporters of the game. It has done so much for Test cricket. It has been astonishing. People are talking about it. People who yeah. don't watch it are now coming up to me. Were they talking away. about it at Snow White, Phil? Did they were talking about, about it, the Snow White pants. <laughs> yeah, I reckon that's the barometer, isn't it? If you're if you're getting people to talk about Test cricket in December while they're going to Snow White, <laughs> the wicked I think, witch. I think even the team get, are onto something. <laughs> the wicked witch gave us a mention. <laughs> she came up to me afterwards and gave it a mention. It was brilliant. Oh, you've been watching Joe Root, Johnny Bairstow, and the boys out there. Oh, it's been brilliant. Oh, isn't no. Ben Stokes good? Yeah. <laughs> if there's been a theme across this podcast, and I think this is a question we'll be pondering for some time to come, but how how have Ben and Baz done it? Well, first and foremost, they've done it with with sheer belief in themselves. I think it helps when you've got two individuals that, and, and, and I'm not, you know, having to go at them at all for this. They 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 play cricket in a way that it, and, and I'm allowed to say this word on this podcast, but I'm, they play as if they don't give a shit. Yeah, and I think yeah. Test cricket has always been a case of people that oh, there's so much pressure. It's a, it's such a hard game. When you've got a couple of individuals that walk in a dressing room and basically say to the lads, "What's up? Just have a pop," and I don't care, don't care if you if if if, if you get out failing to do it, it's not a problem. But have a go, and we're going to keep having a go, and we're going to keep yeah. having a go. And by the way, if we fail having a go again, we're going to go even harder next time. Um, yeah. I think to so, have those two play and and to be very calm and cool with it. I bet they haven't raised their voice once. They've not needed to because they've won most of the games. But I think when you've got that presence of, you know, they, they, neither of them need it. Neither of them. Ben, ben Stokes doesn't need to be the England captain. He's a superhero just being the player. You know, Baz McCullum doesn't need to be the England coach. You know, he could be just commentating, doing his radio gig in New Zealand, uh, going to watch his horses. He's got many of them. But he fancied a go with Ben Stokes to try and do something that the game has never seen. And inside seven months, We've seen Test Match Cricket played by an England side that, let's be honest, no team in the history of Test Match Cricket has ever done. No, no. And I think also it's a great shout as well. I know, uh, how have they done it? I think Ben Stokes has got to... I think uh, there's only sort of like one guy who could have like put this kind of, um, you know, what's, you know this, it, it all into action through his deeds, his work. I think he's captained fantastically as well. It has been, it, it's been sensational. As you say, it all starts from Ben and Baz, but the way Bez, uh, um, Ben has then sort of brought that onto the field has been sensational. So undoubtedly one of the standout moments of the past year was England's T20 World Cup win in November. One of the men who was pivotal to the win, named player of the tournament and player of the match in the final at the MCG, taking three for 12 against Pakistan, was Sam Curran. And I'm delighted to say he has kindly agreed to join us for a chat. Sam, welcome. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, you've been able to call yourself a world champion for over a month now. Yeah. I'm assuming that hasn't got old yet. <laughs> no. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Um, yeah, it's been a, a crazy last probably six weeks, but um, I've been home for three weeks now. Having a bit of time off to reflect, like I was saying, we won the World Cup halfway through November, but had those ODIs straight away, which 
didn't really give us time to reflect, but I guess now we're home. Um, it's been amazing just to be back with family and looking back on the tournament. It seems quite a, a long time ago, actually, but because obviously England played, well, they won today again, which was amazing. Um, but yeah, it's been a crazy few weeks, I guess. Um, Sam, it, 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 it just looked like there was such a great atmosphere during that T20. Were there any nerves or did you think, I mean, the island thing didn't go so well, but, you know, I mean, what was the atmosphere like around the team? And did you always think that you, you fancied you were up to the task of winning it? Yeah, I think, um, to be fair, we had a really good build-up going into the competition. We played in Pakistan, had seven games, and then we had a really good uh, win versus Australia in, in Australia mm. before the tournament. I think you mentioned Ireland there. I think we probably were a little bit nervous at the start, a little bit cautious. It was a World Cup, and um, there was a lot of rain around. So the, the tournament felt quite stop-start all the way through, really. Um, I think it was a big wake-up call when we lost to Ireland. We probably got it wrong where... Duckworth Lewis did us and um, Joss, Joss and Mochi after the game were quite quite clear that we we know we're near where we should be at that game. And then ever since the Island game, I guess we went from strength to strength. Um, the batting unit hadn't really fired until was New Zealand where we needed to win. Joss and Halsey came out all guns blazing, really. So I think that was probably a wake-up call we needed. Uh, Sammy, um, Joss Butler is a captain. First time of asking, he gets the trophy. Obviously, Owen Morgan was the instigator of this uh, white ball revolution for, for English cricket, going back to 2015. How, how do they differ in terms of their leadership? Oh. Um, I'd say I obviously played quite a bit with Morgs as well. I, I'd say pretty similar characters. They're obviously very, very good friends as well. So I think um, Morgs was obviously the one who started the whole transition like you said from 2015 um I guess Morgs was very calm and he gave you that that confidence of you'll be in the team if you fail you if you do well you're always going to stay at that level of base I always find those captains that give you that backing going into tournaments or series where they're kind of like you're going to get the three games don't worry about failure I guess similar to what the test side seems to be doing at the moment um they, I'd say on the field very similar I guess just being behind the stumps you probably can't really communicate with him as much because I guess Morgs was always standing probably at extra cover and you'd run over and you'd discuss as a bowler what you would bowl. Um, Mo and Ali was quite big for me in this tournament. He, being the vice captain, would always run up and almost communicate through just where we're going to bowl, what what the plans are. Um, I'd say very similar. It was kind of that positive mindset of Morgs and Joss. They played so much together. I'm sure Joss will be taking a lot of Morgs's things that he did. So I'd say very similar, but I think as well, Morgs is obviously finished. And um, I guess Joss has been very clear on that. We look, we thank Morgs for everything that he did. Um, but I guess now Joss is the one who's going to try and take it to the next level. Uh, and Sal, I mean, you mentioned Mo and Ali would, would be the one that would come up and speak to you. I mean, your bowling has been a revelation. Sure. You know, your, your qualities of swinging that, that new white ball, um, whether you're bowling slow kind of cutters, sharp bounces, slower ball bounces, you seem to have quite a few tools now to be able to to put the batter under pressure. Who, I mean, you're the the one bowling, but you say Mo and Ali comes up to to talk to you. What kind of conversations will be going about? What ball you're going to be bowling? Yeah, I think um, it's to be fair. I, I guess you are as a bowler. You're at the top of your mark. You probably, if you get hit for six, everyone's going to blame you. But I think the best bit about the team is probably the communication that I guess as a younger player in the side is that Joss and Mo started the over break. This is the field. We reckon that's going to work. And you kind of hear they'll say, what's your best ball? And in Australia, it was probably the dimensions were pretty big square of the wicket. Um, so majority was going into the wicket, making them hit to the big boundaries. But then we came across, I guess, India in the semi final where Adelaide was totally the opposite. So our plans had to change. Um, I guess it was just the belief they give you. They say, what ball do you feel most comfortable bowling? And Morgs and jo uh, Joss and Mo, sorry, would probably be saying, okay, if you're confident there, we're backing you all the way. And I think it's that belief they give They give the bowlings, the bowlers unit. I think the fear of failures flying out the game. And well, me is, I guess, I played a fair bit of cricket, but it seems in a way, the way the game's going, I guess you can link it to the tests is kind of, all the responsibilities on the players now. And it's kind of like, if you fail doing your positive option, there's no real 
um, I guess, what's the word to say? There's no real worry about your spot in the side. And um, I guess it's that belief that you belong at that level. Mm. Just just on your bowling, Sam, you, you obviously, as you say, you're, you're bowling to a plan, but you seem to be able to react to movements by the batters as well. So do you have a range of options in your head as you're, as you're coming into the delivery and you sort of pick from a menu as you were? I think you have to, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's one of those one of those things where I'm I'm a massive believer in going on gut gut feel and gut instinct, especially in those those situations where I guess for someone like me who's not express pace, I guess it's probably easier for batters to line you up. I guess I try and be a bit more bluff the batsman in certain scenarios when they move across and you fancy yourself going and I guess leg stump and you know there's a lot of risk with it because if you miss at the end of the day, it's you're probably going to get hit. But I guess with quicker bowlers, the margin for error is probably a little bit easier because they can do you for pace. So I guess for me, someone, I rely more on my probably variations and gut instant. If guy backs away leg side, you might follow him. And your plan may have been bowl a slow ball, but if he moves before you bowl it, I guess it's one of those things. <laughs> it's tricky because I guess the plan with Mo and Joss might have been slow ball, but when I get to the crease and I see a movement, then you're you're the one in control and you, I guess, take that responsibility if it doesn't work and then you take the rewards if it does. So it's kind of that lottery if you back yourself, you'll take it. But in a World Cup final, I guess it's one of those things where I was pretty confident I had to go with what the team was saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, well, and talking about that, Sam, you know, you, you, you've now sort of like got the unenviable task of sort of becoming England's go-to guy at the death, haven't you? <laughs> was that a sort of plan? In Pakistan, Joss actually kind of invited me to his room for like a chat and obviously coming back from a stress fracture and kind of, I hadn't really been around the group ma- massively. And he was basically like, you, you're going to, how do you feel bowling in these scenarios? I'm really backing. And when he, it was more of a, he wanted me to bowl in all three phases. Previously, I was probably more of a new ball bowler and kind of in the middle. And I guess it was an area he probably wanted. And he, when the captain gives you that belief and he kind of sits you down away from the group and says, no matter what happens, this World Cup, we're going with, this is going to be a role. I'm backing you all the way. The confidence is there. I think it's, like I said, the backing from high guys up top massively helps for players like, maybe me or younger guys coming into the group. Uh, Sammy, um, you know, you, you talk at all your, your bowling skills and, and how well you've done, which is great. Um, your, your prize bracket will possibly have uh, gone up in value. Now, on the 23rd of December, I'll be on the razzle with all my friends around the pubs of Cheshire. Um, I think it, I, I'm, you, you'll know more than me. The auction for the IPL starts at what time? It's an early start, I reckon. What, Tom, don't, don't lie. You'll know exactly the time. What time does it start? I actually don't know the exact time, but I presume it's 9 o'clock, 2 o'clock in India. Right, so you'll be setting your alarm. You'll be up. Just tell me, how does it work? Will you be watching it on a screen like the rest of us, or will you be on the end of the phone? Do you know who potentially will be bidding for you at this stage? Have you had any indication? Um, yeah, I think it's a very weird one, obviously, being in previous auctions in the past, but I guess... You go in at your your base price. You you basically here's my name, and you watch. I'll be watching on on the TV on on Friday morning, I guess. And when your name when your when your name comes up, you'll be saying, "Keep the paddle up, mate." <laughs> <laughs> you firstly you've got to you've got to get picked, and um, I I got obviously hope that I'll go somewhere. But I guess it's one of those things. Like I'm in the same bracket as. I guess Stokesy and a few other all rounders who have come out, and I guess they work in sets. So, um, yeah, anything could happen, but um, we'll see. <laughs> do, do, so, when the paddles start going up, will, will you be like dancing around the, the, the living room? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess it's when your name firstly comes out, it's kind of you wait for the first pick, and um, once you picked, you know you're going to the IPL. But if I guess if teams get bidding, then then they get bidding, I guess. And Sam, obviously, you you mentioned the the test side, and you've been watching the games in Pakistan. Um, you're obviously slightly slightly removed from it, but what have you made of the evolution of the test side this year? Yeah, it's been been crazy. I'm sure you guys would say the same thing. It's I've obviously having played in the past, I haven't played under Stokes or McCullum, but the way they've been playing is amazing. It started in the summer and. Um, the best thing about it, I guess, there's been quite a few injuries and guys like Johnny who probably 
who started that and came out and gave that confidence. He's missed out. And then you got Brookie coming in, he gets 300s in Pakistan. And he's kind of like, everyone's saying, how will Johnny get back? And it's absolutely amazing. Um, I guess everyone thought Pakistan's an amazingly tough place to tour. And um, they've done, I haven't watched loads of it because I've watched the end of this morning as well. It's kind of, it's amazing. You watch the highlights and it's guys are just, like I said, it goes back to that fear of failure. I think in the past, I've been massively guilty of it, I guess. Um, you worry about your spot on the side and if you don't perform and um, I guess you worry if I don't get a 50 today or don't get three for with the ball, you're thinking, oh, someone's coming in, they're going to make a change. Um, but to win nine out of 10 tests in the last kind of ever since the Ashes is going to be, it's an amazing, amazing achievement. Um, excited. It'll be an exciting summer because well, the obvious thing will be the Australians will be the, the big challenge. Sam, you mentioned um, you've not played under Ben's leadership, but you've been in and around Ben Stokes in the dressing room on many occasions. And obviously the World T20 final, once again, you know, you're looking at, at, at an individual that when that pressure comes, and, I, and I've described him, I, I've never seen an England player, and a, a batter in particular, play the pressure card as well as Ben Stokes. Right. What is he like behind the scenes, in the dressing room, on those kind of real big performance days that we see him give what's he like in the dressing room yeah I think you're spot on I guess it's one of going into the T20 World Cup actually it was kind of Stokesy hadn't played much T20 stuff for obvious reasons and there was a couple of times we played where we played Sri Lanka in Sydney and we you could tell there were a little bit of panic a little bit of nerves and um, I think we needed maybe 50 to win three wickets down and we were cruising Stokesy had just gone in um, and we went bang, bang, two wickets lost. And I walked out to bat needing 30 to win, like five down, 30 run a ball. Pretty, you obviously, it was a spinning pitch. So Sri Lanka had some dangerous spinners. So, and the first thing Stokes said, I, didn't even, I said, well, how's it going, man? And the first thing he said, like, don't worry, we'll, we'll win this. Kind of like that whole confidence. <laughs> he was like so, so confident when he's in the middle. And I guess he did it in the final as well. You saw he absorbed all the pressure. The MCG wicket was doing a fair bit. He just seems to be the man there at the big moments, doesn't he? He's just that, he gives you that massive confidence. He's that player you want. I, as a younger guy in the team, he's always, if you're struggling, he always was to have a little chat with you. And I think that's what he's probably done with the test side is he, sending Rian Ahmed last night and, and at number three, it's kind of like <laughs> the guy's 18, he's on his debut and I actually listened to his interview after and he said, oh, Stokes, he wanted me to finish it before tonight and you kind of, <laughs> well, it's incredible that it's kind of guys are so confident and um it's uh, it's amazing because obviously all he's been through recently he just we always say it, he just seems to be there at the the big moments and um there's a reason for that because they big games big pressure moments and um now he's the captain so it's pretty cool does, does he say much in the dressing room you know obviously not you've not been there when he's been the skipper but does, is he a big talker in and around the group uh, he is. He is obviously not being captain in the white ball setup. He probably not as, but probably not as loud as he is in the in the test team. But he's 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 a massive figure in the dressing room. Guys look up to him from from everywhere. The staff, the players, we all we look up to the way he trains, the way he goes about his just taking on those moments. He's diving around in the field even when he's half <laughs> injured. He's he's taking it to the next level. So. It's just a great person to have. And you can tell when you play against teams that when you've got Stokesy on your side, they, they're always, always wary of him, if you know what I mean. Yeah, Sam, you, you must be looking forward to playing with Rahem uh, Ahmed because you can call him youngster, can't you? <laughs> yeah, finally my nickname, Junior, my dad. <laughs> yeah, and so how much would you relish playing in this test side under, under Ben and, and Baz? Yeah, it's great. I think I I got injured last year where... Probably I ruled me out of all Red Bull cricket really this summer, so I haven't played much Red Bull. Um, I think just watching the team, it gives you that. It probably suits similar to the style I like to play. It's very attacking, and you. It's just more. I think the confidence factor. It seems that they just giving everyone is. I think the fear of failure in the past, like I've spoken about various times, is if that's taken out of your mind and you given that freedom. Maybe I guess the way they back Zach Crawley has been incredible as well. He's he's come out of this summer in a tough place and then first test of the winter he gets 100 I think that type of stuff shows that they're fully backing each other and it gives massive confidence I'd love to be a part of that environment it's probably quite tough at the moment they're doing pretty well and um, you got guys I guess Brody will come back Joff 
hopefully we'll be yeah. nice and ready for the summer as well. So it's just a great team to watch and um, I just keep trying to do well in the Red Bull games I do play and yeah, fingers crossed. You, you've mentioned a couple of times um, about removing that fear of failure. How does a captain go about doing that? Is it just consistency or is it the level of trust he's got with the players? Yeah, I think it's a bit of both. Maybe start of a series, it will be, if you're a top order batter, you'll say, whatever happens, mate, this series is your, that's your position, you go with it. Whereas in the past, you've probably gone into test matches thinking, oh, if I fail, yeah, there's, I'm, I'm, my, my spot's probably on the line. And that there's nothing worse than going into the, into the game where you're probably fearing your spot, there's nothing worse. So, um, yeah, it's, I think that's what they put, it seems like they're doing because the way guys are, the way guys are batting, it's um, definitely shows that they're getting back because you wouldn't see an 18 year old on debut <laughs> trying to hit hits a six second ball like stuff like that's something you'd probably never happen. But I think it's I'm super excited. The summer's going to be crazy because that Aussie attack against the way our guys are batting mm-hmm. is going to be incredibly exciting. Sam, I, I think you've made it to the, the the real key part of the interview now. Oh, what are you going to say? Who's going to win? No, 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 no. We don't ask those kind of uh, journalistic <laughs> questions. You, you, Phil, Phil Tufnell has an either-or section. The cat oh, yeah. asks you a few questions, and it's very simple. It's either-or. Yeah. One or the okay. other. They can be a bit tricky, some of these, so give it give it about a second thought. So we get this is the first one. E- nice easy one just to warm you up, mate. Here we go. Either or bowling in the power play or bowling at the death. In the power play. Fancy the power play, just a little bit mm. of swing, why not? You can burgle a few wickets at the end if that's it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, it's slightly less slightly less concerning, I should imagine. Um right, here we go. Very apt for the for the moment we're in at the moment. Pre match nerves or pre auction nerves. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We'll go with pre auction because it's <laughs> so, um, Sam, can I just uh, what we've not told you on this podcast is that we we generally charge people that come on and we we charge you two percent of your your auction bid. Is that okay? <laughs> no, we can negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so next one. Um, oh, here we go. Um, Chennai Super Kings or Oval Invincibles? They're tricky. Oh, uh, here we go. Um, <laughs> I'll say Oval Invincibles because they're currently my team. Yeah, good. You have to good say that, Sam. Uh, test cricket or T Twenty cricket? <laughs> what am I saying is going to create a headline, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll just be honest, Sam. That's all we ask. Well, at the moment, T Twenty cricket, I'd say, because I'm playing that. Yeah, good. And a world champion. Here we go. This is a tricky one. Last one, mate, and I can put you out of your misery. Um, Owen Morgan or Joss Butler? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are allowed to answer this. Who would you... <laughs> Again, I've said Joss Butler because he's my character after, so you pick me. <laughs> Correct oh, answer. Yeah. Well done, mate. Well done. Phil, you're 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 getting very good at those, Phil. Hey, they're tough, mate. You know what I mean? Come on. I think they were perfect <laughs> perfectly answered. Well done, Sam. Thanks for thanks for getting involved with that, mate. No worries. Well, that was excellent. Sam Curran there. Very articulate young man and about to be a very, very, very rich young man, Phil. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's going to be. There's going to be a few nerves about, as you say, we, we about the paddles going up and and the IPL and what have you. But there again, I mean, look at this kind of guy. You know, absolute world beater, um, and it just shows the depth, the strength and depth of England have got. I mean, very got a, a very old head on young shoulders. Um, yeah, top man, top cricketer. Yeah. And Mike, you you. You you know about the IPL auction. There's some sort of suggestion that he might be the biggest bid ever, might break records. Do you think? Do you think he'll? Do you think that might happen? Well, you know, if you're a if you're a head of a franchise at the IPL, you, you want in a you know you want a left arm over. He gives you that. You want someone that can bowl in all stages of the innings. He can do that. You want a, a player that is a good fielder. He gives you that. 
and he's a batter that can bat in about six or seven different positions. He's the the modern all round cricketer, you know, for for T Twenty. I mean, he's had great success at, at Test level. I'm sure he'll get a chance in this Ben and Baz revolution at some stage. But he is a, a fantastic young cricket and a great guy. You know, I think both he and Tom, he, they've got another brother Ben as well that plays a bit of county cricket, but. I just like their mentality. I just think from the day that they've arrived playing for England, they've just had this this kind of mentality of, of loving the pressure. You know, yeah. and they generally bowl when when the pressure's on, whether it's at the start of the innings, at the end of the innings. Um, it was a revolution for, for England in the T20 World Cup. He's young. He's still got, I dread to think how many years left playing the game. Uh, and he's humble as well. So I think he's going to have many, many more years of success. And, and I think you're right. He's... He's rich already, I reckon, for a young chap. I, I think by Christmas Eve, he's going to be very, very rich. It's not all about the money, Mike. It's not all about the money. It's nice, though, fella, isn't it? it is. we, see him, we see him running in, and he's sort of aggressive in the best possible way, isn't he? Yeah. He, well, he, just, he, just, he seems to be able to deliver, as you say, in whatever ever situation, and especially with the ball, because he first came in, didn't he? And I think, Mike, you made, you made it a, a, the, the observation a long, long time ago that you think he could bat four, five or six, you know what I mean, for England one day. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he's going to be that good. But he just seems to adapt to every situation. Obviously a very fast learner, um, got a very good cricket brain on his head, because in order to bowl at the death, you've got a second desk you've got to be able to think as a batter and think where they're going to do and where they're going to look to hit and then just executes his skills spot on you know I mean to bowl those wide Yorkers it's a, mm. it's a tricky skill and to then sort of you know slower balls and get them in the right areas it's a very tricky skill he's uh yeah he's, a, he's, a, he's at the top of his game at the moment he's at the top of his game he's a world champion and, and more strength to him and the Red Bull game do we think he'll get back into the contention for the test squad ahead of the Ashes um, I don't think it'll be far away. I think having that left arm, oh, the only thing when you play in Australia, do you want to create more rough for Nathan Lyon? Possibly not. <laughs> um, you know, but I just think he's going to be there or thereabouts. England have got now a group of, of players across all the formats of the game where you're probably looking at 22 players across all the formats. And, you know, Sam Curran certainly will be um, thought about for the Ashes next year because he's, he's, a, he's more of a, I would say, a duke ball, red ball cricketer, you know, when the ball's swinging around a little bit in English conditions. Yeah. He's probably that kind of cricketer, uh, more so on the flatter wickets. Um, but I think over time, he'll, he'll be a cricketer that can play test cricket in all conditions because of his ability to do everything. You know, he can yeah. bat, he can get your runs. We've seen that in test cricket. He can get wickets, you know, he, and he's a good fielder. So he's, he's like that all-round cricket. England have got a number of cricketers now that do a lot. You know, Lee and Livingston, they feel Rehan Ames, they can do everything. You know, they've got amazing abilities across uh, all the different kind of facets of the game. Um, yeah, so he'll be mentioned whether he'll get a starting place in that first test match, I doubt. But will he play one or two of the test matches across the Ashes? Uh, I wouldn't rule it out. And Mike, you've already said you, you think England are now favourites, slim favourites, I assume, uh, for the Ashes. Phil, do you agree with that? Are you looking forward to next year? Absolutely. Can't wait for it. I mean, this is going to be the ultimate test, isn't it? It's been perfect for this England side um, over the last coming, you know, over the last year, as we've we've mentioned, but now this is the big one for me. You know what I mean? Can you put that into practice against this Australian team? Um, can't wait. I think it's going to be, I, I think the crowds are in for an absolute treat. I think the Grounds are going to be rocking. Test match cricket. If we have a wonderful summer and the sun shines, I think it's going to be an awesome summer. You know, the Aussies are in town. Ashes cricket. This style of cricket. The Aussies won't take a back foot, uh, a backward step. We won't take a backward step. Go on, step. Phil. Sell Come it, on, let's bit. Come, it's going to be. I can't wait. It's going to be cracking. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I just think. From the way England have played, and you know they've hammered New Zealand, they've, they've, they've blown away South Africa, they beat India in that Test match, they've gone to Pakistan and won three. And the last time Australia won here officially was two thousand and one. You've got to remember in two thousand and nineteen, as, as well as Australia played, it was two all. All yeah. right, they took the Ashes back, but it was two all. And this England side are, are, are a miles better team, yeah. miles better team than that side in two thousand and nineteen. And can you say to me that the Australians are a miles better team than the side that they brought in 2019? No. It's pretty much the same. They're playing good cricket and their bowling sack is very, very dangerous. But I don't think any bowling unit is going to wake up on the morning of a test morning and think, great, yeah. I'm bowling at a batting lineup that's going to sit in. Yeah. There's the juggernaut that's going to come at them. 
The juggernaut yeah. arrives and it just keeps coming at you and it's a nightmare to bowl to. Yeah, I make I make it right, mate. I tell you something. Usually, you get off of that plane. I think a lot of Aussie sides get off of that plane over it when they when they land in Heathrow, and they think, right, come on, we've got the we've got the measure of these boys. I'm the know? pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Booty was that's for sure. <laughs> Booty got carried off, but um, and they'll you, you know, and I think that they will be they 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 will have concerns. They will have concerns. And if the first, and, and at that first test match, if England can get off to the flyer and play in the manner that we have been playing in the manner, I think it, I, I think we're going to be favourites. That first little spell, those first little salvos, we say it every time, you know, it's going to be crucial. And if we can come out, win the toss, that first, that first test match and go out there and absolutely smash it, I, I think that's going to go a long way for us. We want what we want in that first test match. We- for the f- pure theatre, yeah. Ben Stokes to win the toss and say, I want a chase. <laughs> <laughs> a, fan- well, a fancy well, chase in this game. <laughs> okay, well, why not? Why not? Who knows what's going to happen? Ashes test match. Yeah, over to well, you. Exactly. That's why it's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. You turn up, you're going to turn up every day and just not know what's going to be happening. That's all for today and for 2022 on the Vaughan and Tuffers Cricket Club podcast. A huge thanks to Sam Curran for joining us and big thanks to Mike and Phil too, not just for today, but for the whole year. A reminder that if you have any feedback for us, it's much appreciated. The address is cricketclub at telegraph.co.uk. We're always keen to hear from you. If you've missed any of our previous episodes or are new to the channel, there's an abundance of great interviews to listen to over the Christmas break. We've got the likes of Joe Root and Brendan McCullum to name but a few. And while you're there, please don't forget to subscribe. That's it from us for the year. A massive thanks to everyone who's supported us. From Michael, Phil and me, we wish you a Merry Christmas and look forward to another great year for English cricket in 2023. We'll see you then.